I accept the Ramon Maxese Award with total gratitude to the Foundation and the Philippines. The award of Ramon Maxese Award Foundation ensures me that I am now on the right track. This generous gesture of yours gives me very power to improve the efficiency of my work in the future. This award is a celebration of the essence of Ramon Magsaysay. Common sense and uncommon passion. Authenticity and the power of high office. All these in the service of our people so that those who have less in life may have more in law. Ramon Magsaysay was really an ordinary guy. A simple guy from humble beginnings. Early in life, Ramon learned from his parents the value of hard work, honesty, and integrity. Values that would serve him well later in life. After graduating from college, he worked as a mechanic for a bus company and later on became its manager. He then met Luz Banson and they were married after a few years of courtship. They had three children and like most people then, lived a life that characterized those times. Simple, austere, tranquil. World War II shattered that peace and changed Ramon's life forever. He served as a guerrilla doing intelligence work. He did so well that the Japanese army hunted him down. In 1946, he was voted overwhelmingly as congressman for his hometown and was re-elected in 1949. But his second term was cut short when he was appointed as Secretary of National Defense. Through his initiative, and largely because of his sincerity, he was able to quash the growing threat of the communist-led rebels, or the Hooks. In 1953, 70% of Filipinos voted him as the president of their republic. No other Philippine president before or since had ever received such an overwhelming mandate from the people. In him, they saw not just a sincere and caring president, they knew he was a leader they could trust and respect. Once, he even willingly paid the fine for driving without a license. For all his simplicity and seeming ordinariness, he had strength of character, a greatness of spirit. He saw people's needs, seized and created opportunities to help. He started programs that helped the poor. He opened Malacanang's doors and people flocked to the palace to talk to him or simply to touch him or shake his hand. It was enough for them to know that someone took time to listen. He was a friend, not just of the masses, but even of big business as well. No one was too rich or too poor for his attention. Then, tragedy struck. On March 17, 1957, his plane crashed into Mount Manungal in Cebu, killing all but one on board. The nation mourned as one. Filipinos felt they had lost their father, leader, friend. Friends from everywhere felt a great sense of loss at his untimely passing. Yet in the face of that loss, some people chose to celebrate his spirit. Barely six weeks after his death, on April 30, the new president, Carlos P. Garcia, received a letter from the Rockefeller brothers, Nelson and John III, proposing the establishment of the Ramon Magsaysay Awards 
as a recognition to individuals who shared and lived out the ideals of the late great president. John D. and Nelson had been some of those who had seen up close Magsaysay's strength of character. Because of this letter, seven people who knew the president intimately set up the Ramon Magsaysay Award Foundation with an initial grant of $500,000 from the Rockefeller Brothers Fund. In 1959, the Philippine Congress donated land to the foundation and later with additional grant and loan from the RBF, the Ramon Magsaysay Center was built. This center is home to the foundation the Asian Library, the RM Papers and Memorabilia. Since its start in 1958, the Ramon Magsaysay Awards has honored over 200 individuals and institutions in five different fields. Government Service, public service, community leadership, journalism, literature, and creative communication arts. And peace and international understanding. In 2001, with a grant from the Ford Foundation, a new category was added, Emergent Leadership. The awards, the most prestigious in Asia, are given each year on August 31st, Magsaysay's birthday. They are usually handed out by no less than the Philippine president. Following a code of procedure, the awardees are chosen only after a thorough investigation of their work and careful deliberation by the Board of Trustees. Awardees are chosen regardless of their age, race, sex, creed, or religion. For Magsaysay's generosity of spirit had known no boundaries of race or creed or religion. Awardees are noted individuals like Mother Teresa, the Dalai Lama, Professor Yunus of the Grameen Bank. But they could also be lesser-known persons who have toiled quietly in their own spheres of influence and made other people's lives better. She brought learning and hope to the children in the slums of Klong Toy. He improved rural Taiwan with his good deeds and by building bridges using volunteer community work. With her pen, she fought and won against the giant chemical company that was polluting their river and destroying her people's lives. He enlisted community leaders from 50 countries to come up with a common goal of secure, sustainable, and equitable livelihood for the world's rural people. She has been treating needy Filipino children most of her life, even in her 80s. The awards also gave rise to the program for Asian projects, which helped the awardees to either continue their projects or find new avenues to serve. It also enables the awardees to meet and associate with one another, perhaps to start other projects together. Asia is a richer place because Ramon Magsaysay once lived in it and tried to make it a better place. Like him, these awardees have shown that when one ordinary person works with a heart, what is little becomes much. It is then when just one makes a difference. <laughs>